Welcome to Your Future, Your Way, where we explore the many ways to reach your academic and professional goals. Whether you are a recent grad, considering career advancement, or even changing careers, this podcast is for you. There is more than one way to do higher education. This is Your Future, Your Way. My name is Alyssa Olick, Assistant Dean for Professional Degrees and Certificates, which is part of the professional programs at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We are excited to share information, resources, and most importantly, stories from current and former students. Before we start, we want you to know that the views, information, or opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of the Division of Continuing Studies, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, or the Board of Regents. There are many ways to fund your graduate education. In a previous episode, we shared information about scholarships, and today we're going to focus on other types of financial aid. Student financial aid helps make college more affordable, and there are many types of aid available to students, including grants, scholarships, work-study jobs, loans, and other opportunities at the federal, state, and college level. Some aid is free and does not have to be paid back, such as scholarships and grants. Other financial aid is work-study, where you don't have to pay it back, but you do have to work for it. And some types of financial aid needs to be repaid with interest, such as loans. Therefore, it is important to look carefully at your options to make an informed decision based on your specific needs. An important first step is to fill out the FAFSA, or Free Application for Federal Student Aid, at studentaid.gov. Current and prospective college students complete the FAFSA to determine their eligibility for student financial aid. To learn more about the financial aid options at UW-Madison, we are joined by Carrie from the Office of Student Financial Aid, who will share more information about the eligibility requirements, FAFSA, and types of financial aid specific to graduate students. Hello, thank you for your interest in the graduate school here at UW-Madison. My name is Karen Temkin in the Office of Student Financial Aid, and I'll be sharing with you information about uh, filling out the FAFSA and what financial aid you might be able to access as a graduate student here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. The first steps to accessing anything financial aid related here at UW is to fill out the FAFSA the free application for federal student aid. If you didn't have to fill it out in your undergraduate, but you're looking for perhaps loans in your graduate career, you will have to start with the FAFSA. Now, one thing that's different as a graduate student than an undergraduate is that you do not need to have parental information on the FAFSA. So be prepared to only produce your own financial information when you're filling out the FAFSA for graduate school. Now you can fill out that that FAFSA the year before you're anticipating starting. And uh, you can put in several different school codes. Hopefully you pop in UW-Madison is one of those school codes. And to uh, whatever schools you input in the FAFSA is who your FAFSA information will be sent to. The FAFSA is something that can be completed every year that you expect to access financial aid. When you are filling out the FAFSA, some things that you'll need You will have to have a FSA ID. That's basically the login credentials to be able to begin the FAFSA and to to digitally sign it. If you filled out the FAFSA in your undergrad, you'd use that same FSA ID. Um, It is your your username or your email address um, and password that you created initially. If you didn't ever fill out the FAFSA before, then you will have to create that first before you begin. In order to be eligible for federal student aid, you do need a social security number or an alien registration number. You'll want your federal income tax returns, your W-2s, and other records of money earned handy while you're filling that out. Also, you'll need your bank statements and records of all of your investments and any records of untaxed income if applicable. An example of this might be child support, for instance. Some tips and tricks while you're filling that FAFSA out. You will have a a chance to use something called the IRS data retrieval tool. This can be your very best friend. Basically, it gives you, uh, it gives the FAFSA permission to suck your information directly from the IRS and spit it back into the FAFSA 
And if you're able to do that, we highly recommend that you do. First of all, it's way less information that you have to manually fill out. So the process is smoother, it goes faster, less room for human error. And it lowers your chances of being selected for a process called verification, which uh, a little less than a, a quarter or so of all FAFSAs get flagged by the federal government for verification, just meaning that you have to provide extra documentation to show that what you put on the FAFSA is accurate. If you use the IRS data retrieval tool, it lowers your chances of being selected for verification from the get-go. Another thing that I want to point out is that the FAFSA is a federal website being used by hundreds of thousands of families all across the nation, usually right around the same time of year. So sometimes technology, right, it can be a little glitchy. Uh, now I say that not to get the FAFSA a bad rap, they're really fast at hearing about those glitches and fixing them, but uh, it's important that you plan ahead, right? Don't wait until the, the day before your classes are going to start or the day before that your bill is going to be due to fill out the FAFSA. Um, plan ahead, get that taken care of right away. We will return after this short break to discuss other financial aid to consider for graduate school, such as scholarships and loans. This episode of Your Future, Your Way comes from UW-Madison Professional Programs, offering over 90 graduate level programs including online and evening and weekend options for working adults. For more details, visit us at go.wisc.edu slash pro. So moving on, uh, we get a lot of questions about scholarships. So everything at UW-Madison scholarship related is housed under the WISH Scholarship Hub. Um, if you just Google it or go to wisc.edu and search for scholarships, this will come up. Um, that's where our scholarships are posted. So as soon as you apply to the university, you are able to look at the WISH Scholarship Hub and see what scholarships might be available. Don't wait until you're accepted because deadlines have probably passed at that point. So do keep an eye on that WISH Hub. Um, graduate students have access to loans. So loans we know have to be repaid and repaid with interest. Just by filling out the FAFSA, you do have access to federal direct loans. So I will start with that. But you also have access to private and grad plus loans as well. So I, I'll dig into all of those things. But the first thing here is that federal direct loan. That is, again, that loan that you have access to just by filling out the FAFSA. This loan is, it'll show up on your financial aid offer. And it is unsubsidized, meaning it does accrue interest while you're in school. The grace period for that loan is six months. So that means that you don't have to start making payments until six months after you graduate or drop below part time. You do have access to $20,500 in federal direct loans per academic year. So that's fall, spring, and summer. If you need to borrow more than the $20,500, you have two options. These are separate from your financial aid offer. There are separate applications. The first is a grad plus loan. This is a loan that is through the federal government. So you can find that at FAFSA or at uh, studentaid.gov, excuse me. It is, uh, similar to the unsubsidized federal direct loan in that there's a six month grace period. You don't have to start making payments till six months, or excuse me, um, it's similar to the unsubsidized uh, loan in that it is unsubsidized. It does accrue interest while you're in school. Um, there is an option for in-school deferment, so you don't have to make payments on that um, loan until six months after you graduate. You could also pursue a private loan. This is a loan through a bank or a credit union. Depending on your credit history, you may need a cosigner, and the interest rate on that loan is based on your credit or your cosigner's credit. We can't recommend one lender over another, but we do have a tool on our website called Fast Choice, so check that out. We also recommend that you check out employment opportunities. You can go to studentjobs.wisc.edu to see what's available and listed at the student jobs website. So let's say you get uh, accepted, you celebrate, hooray, you choose to come here. Maybe you're using your uh, federal direct loans to help cover the cost. What are some other resources available to you to uh, uh, cover any gap in the cost of, of attendance? The first I already talked about, graduate plus and private loans. The second is scholarships and departmental funding. The third, employment, already talked about all those, right? So when you're getting your financial aid offer, be sure to keep these things in mind. And then there's also some other financing options as well to fill in that gap. 
The first is an installment plan. We have something called Badger Pay, which you can enroll in for $50 per semester. And it splits up your payments into three separate installments for the semester. The rest of the financing options exist in the world. Students have taken advantage of them, but they're outside of the purview of a financial aid office to give any advice about. Lastly, just want to point out that we are here to answer your questions. So if you have questions, just give our office a call or send us an email. I also recommend that you follow us on social media. We post about different financial wellness events, different financial literacy tips, scholarships, all sorts of things. So do follow us on social media. We are physically located at 333 East Campus Mall right here on the ninth floor. All right. Well, thank you again for considering UW-Madison for your graduate career. If you have questions, please reach out and on Wisconsin. Thanks, Carrie, for sharing so much information about financial aid options for graduate students. We encourage you to visit financialaid.wisc.edu to learn more about the many ways you can fund your education. Also, go to pdc.wisc.edu slash podcast to find episode five, which focuses on scholarship opportunities. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Join us next time to learn more about professional programs at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Learn how to shape your future your way.